Hello, my name is Karen and I am an occupational therapy student at Kaiser University's MSOT Bridge Program. As part of my virtual level one fieldwork experience, I am creating weekly YouTube videos discussing various topics. This week, as part of our pediatric rotation, we were instructed to come up with different pieces of adaptive equipment using household items. I was very excited for this um, assignment because I really enjoy modifying and adapting things that in the environment using just like everyday stuff. Now I work with the geriatric population and the adult population typically so it was kind of fun to like think more in a kid's view this time but this is still something that excites me so I came up with a couple different activities um, which I will show you now. The first one is something that I use with my adult clients as well. This would be for any child who has either poor grip strength or poor fine motor control. Whenever you're playing a game with some cards, which I don't have on me, but I cut up some note cards, um, if the child is unable to fan out the cards in order to hold them in front of them like this and they don't have that pinch strength needed to do that, or they don't have the fine motor control to just manage a bigger deck than this would be, one option you can have is using a clip, either a food clip, a binder clip could work too, and you would just fan out the cards. You can still make that fanning motion like this and clip it in the center. Or you can make them a little more straight if that's easier for the child to read. And so I listed a couple of like reasons why a child would use this. This would be implemented with a child really as early as two or three, depending on the game that you're participating in with a child. Obviously some card games are not appropriate for children that young. This is an example of holding them straight. Um, but this can also go up until middle school if the child's playing, you know, Uno with you or whatever card game it might be. You can use this with any age group, but this would not really be used before the ages of probably three, depending again, based on what level of card game you're playing with the child. The next piece of adaptive equipment I have uses a piece of foam tubing. I actually have a plastic piece with me here, and this one it has like a ribbed grippy edge um, but you can get smooth foam pieces at Walmart or at Home Depot also and they come in different sizes too this is a fairly small size um, and you can see the opening right there and this can be used for built-up handles again something that I am used to using in the adult population but with children this would be for anyone again who's struggling with that grip strength or that coordination of being able to Maybe they're not able to do the dynamic tripod grasp or the lateral pinch grasp, whatever grasp it might be. And you can use it with pencils, which I'll show you with here. But you can also use this, for instance, um, when working with brushing teeth. If the child is unable to hold that small handle of a toothbrush in order to perform that task, you can put these over the toothbrush. Um, and it just builds up the handle a little bit. So you can see, like with this, the pencil is this skinny, and now I made it a little bit wider with that handle. So if it was with writing, um, you probably wouldn't want to rely on this too early on. You're going to still want to work with that child on promoting that proper grasp. But if it's for like brushing teeth, I would introduce this as an option at about maybe the age of six when children are starting to brush their teeth by themselves without assistance from an adult. Also because when children are younger, they're probably using those toothbrushes that already come with a built up handle. Um, this would also be a good option for if the child does not want to use those built up handle toothbrushes because they might look too young, they might be embarrassed by it. These come in a solid color as you can see and you can just place it on there for it and it's also removable if they want to try options without it. And again it comes in different sizes so if this is still too small for the child you could buy a larger size. Um, the largest I've seen is about that big. I don't know the measurement, I'm sorry, but definitely an adaptable piece of equipment that you can modify based on what your child needs. The next two options I'm going to show you are for eating or more specifically for drinking. Um, the first one is using an open cup. Children do start using an open cup by the age of about 12 months. They're not really good at it until about 18 months. Um, and this would be for, you could start as young as 18 months, but Using a cup without a lid is probably going to be a little bit older. I would say this would be more used with children who are like four years or older. Um, and this recommendation I would make for any child who is struggling with um, an ability to perform neck extension. So normally when you're taking a drink from a cup, you have to tilt your head back to coordinate that motion. Because if you don't, this is going to hit the nose and you're going to spill it everywhere. This piece of equipment, a nosy cup, a DIY nosy cup, we 
you can buy these through a medical equipment store. You can well, probably order them on Amazon too. But again, this is a DIY using home uh, supplies that you already have. So if you have foam cups at your house, I do not do this with plastic cups because that would be a sharp edge. But if you have foam or like those paper cups when you get them um, either the Dixie cups or at a drive through restaurant, you can just cut out the pieces right here. So instead of like if I have it turned so I'm not using it, it's hitting my face because I'm not doing that neck extension. I can now make it to where my nose is going to go through here and I can drink without it hitting my face. And you can cut that to be as wide or as narrow as you need. Um, you don't want to go too deep because then you're risking spilling whatever liquid is inside. And that is something that if you wanted to introduce this to children, um, talking with the parents so that they understand the concept and they also know not to, you know, cut too wide or too... Talk it through with the parents before you just throw that concept at them. The final piece of adaptive equipment I'm going to make a recommendation for is something that I have not used in practice. All of these others that I have mentioned, I either used on my rotations um, pediatric during my CODA program or I have used with adult clients. This one I read about and it sounded interesting to me, so I wanted to mention it in this video. Um, again, with drinking, if your child is using a glass cup, so older, maybe like five or six, but also if they're using um, maybe a metal cup or one that's plastic but smooth, something that doesn't have good grip texture for them. I read the recommendation of putting rubber bands on, which is an interesting concept to me. So for children who have trouble with that grip strength again, or maybe they need a little bit more tactile feedback to understand you know, how much pressure they're applying, where their hand is in space, whether or not they have a good grasp, grasp control on it, this would be helpful for that. So it's providing that feedback, but it's also just providing a little bit more texture on the glass which can make the grip a little bit easier and improve that strength and control. So I've just placed it around and now it's not quite as slippery. Um, and this one is not building it up so if the child is unable to hold a glass that's small you would want to modify the activity by getting a bigger glass and building it up. This is more so like they have the control to hold this size glass but it's just, it's pretty slippery. They don't quite have the strength to maintain that grip in order to not drop the glass. So this kind of just gives me a little bit of leverage. It makes the glass not quite so slippery. Again, using solid glass, I would not introduce this to children under the age of six. But if it's a plastic cup that they're using at home that is just not, it's a very slippery plastic, this would be something to try earlier of three, maybe four. Again, children can drink out of an open cup as early as 18 months, but that does not make them masters of it yet. And parent supervision should always be implemented in order to um, prevent spills, but also clean up any spills that occur. Thank you so much for joining me this week, and I look forward to next week's video.